everyone. Welcome to another Sunday School Online. Thank you for joining us. A special thank you to all the mothers out there. A happy Mother's Day. Thank you to all you do for us. We love you very much. Hey kids, have you gone and said Happy Mother's Day to your mum yet? If not, pause this video, run off and give her a big hug now and say thank you for all she does for you. And if you haven't got a Mother's Day gift yet, that's okay, because Miss Hannah has an awesome craft coming up. I want to say a big thank you to the mums in my life, to Mrs. Young, my mum, I love you mum, to my mother-in-law, Mrs. Dowsett, to Mrs. Finn, my nan, thank you for the example that all of you have been in my life. I'm very thankful for you. Well, thank you to everyone who sent work in this week. We love to get it, keep it coming. Thank you to Leela and Liam for their great work. You've done a great job. Also, thank you to Naomi, Abigail and Caleb. You've done a top job with your activity sheets. And we've also had some work sent in to us by Naomi, Mercy, Natasha, Gift and Loveness. That's great work, kids. Now, these few are from all the way over in Zambia, in Africa. So hello to you if you are in Umpalungu, Nakonde or Kitwe. Thank you so much for watching. A special hello to our missionaries there, the Kaufmans. Well, it's time to sing now. And you're going to need your Bible to sing this because we're going to sing the B-I-B-L-E. So pause this video if you don't have your Bible. Run and grab it because we're going to sing the B-I-B-L-E through twice. Thank you, Mrs. Hannah. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's a book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible. Great singing. I hope you didn't wake your mum up if she wasn't awake already. Good work. Hello, everyone. It's Mrs. Hannah here with another memory verse this week. Did you learn your verse last week? I hope you did. There were some kids this week who learnt their verse and did a fantastic job. Thank you for sending in the video to us. This week's verse is Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 and this is a great verse. It says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Let's say it all together with the reference. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. If you want to add some actions, here are some that I like to do to help me remember it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Have a go at learning it. Make sure you say it to someone in your family. See you next time. All right, boys and girls, it's time to have a lesson from the Word of God. We're going to finish the story of David and Goliath. Can you remember what we've done so far? Do you remember that Goliath was a big, tall giant, that he was about three meters tall, he was big and strong, and he'd been a soldier since he was just a young man. And that two times a day, morning and evening, for at least 40 days, he'd come with the Philistine army to challenge Israel to see who would fight him. And if you remember, whoever lost would become the slave to the winner. Well, David's father, Jesse, wanted to know how David's three older brothers were doing and he sent David to see what was going on with the battle and how it was going and if they were safe and healthy. Well, when David got there, he heard Goliath's challenge to Israel. And when David heard this, he knew something had to be done. And so he decided that he was going to go and face Goliath. And remember, his brothers were really angry with him and they complained that he had been a mischievous, naughty little man and that, well, that he'd just come to create mischief. But word got to King Saul. And finally, King Saul agreed after he heard how David killed the bear and the lion that David could go and fight Goliath. 
And well, this week we're going to see what happens there. But before we do, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to bless our time. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for what we've learned so far from David and Goliath. May you help us to listen and pay attention to the word of God and to learn something uh, special today. Bless our time in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, today's lesson comes from 1 Samuel chapter 17, and it comes from verses 38 to the end of the chapter, which is verse 58. So 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 38 to 58. Maybe you can follow along as we read some of that soon. Now, David was ready to go and face Goliath, but before he could go, King Saul wanted him to be protected. And so he gave him some armor. And this wasn't just any old armor. Saul wanted David to have the very best armor in Israel. So Saul gave David his own armor, the king's armor. So it was his, his, uh, his protective bodysuit and his helmet. And, and he said, here, David, you try this on. And David put it on, but there was a problem. It didn't fit David. And I'm guessing David tried to do some moves and it just didn't work. It was too big and David said, Saul, I can't wear this. This is going to hold me up. So he took it off and gave it back to Saul. Because remember, Saul, he was a big soldier. While he was king, we're told that he was head and shoulders above everyone else. So even to a regular person, it wouldn't have fitted. But to David, a young man, there was no chance. So David gave it back to Saul and David went out to battle with just his staff and his sling. Well, David, by this stage, was ready. And so he went out to meet Goliath, who was probably coming back for his evening session to challenge Israel again. And on the way out to see Goliath, David stopped at a little brook, a little stream, and he picked up five smooth stones. Have you ever been to a brook and have you ever tried to pick up and skim stones across the water? You know, stones that are probably about that big or, or maybe a bit bigger. Have you ever done that? I've done that lots. And I reckon they're the little stones David picked up and he picked up five of them. And David put those in a little bag that he had and he went out to face Goliath. He had his staff, his sling and his bag with the stones in it. Well, when Goliath came to challenge Israel that, that evening, they saw David. He saw David and he thought, well, wow, great, someone's finally coming to challenge me. So Goliath went to meet David. So he walked out, and, but he got a surprise. When he actually got to close enough to David, he realized something. David wasn't a big, mighty soldier. David was just a youth, just a young man. And this did not please Goliath. He thought, hang on, what's going on here? I'm coming to fight you, and you send a, a little kid? with a stick? He goes, what am I? Do you think I'm a dog? Do you think you're, I'm a dog that you would send a little boy to fight me? And this made Goliath really upset and he started to curse David by his gods and, and this, and Goliath thought, oh, this will be easy. And Goliath said to David, I am going to kill you. And I'm not even gonna allow you to have a funeral. I'm gonna let the wild animals eat you. Goliath thought he was gonna win this easy. But David had other ideas. And he turned to Goliath and said, Goliath, not so fast. He said, you are coming at me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. And you think you're going to kill me. But David said, I have a better weapon. David said, I have the Lord God the God of Israel, the God of the armies of Israel, the God who you have mocked. He is on my side. And today, David said to Goliath, it's not going to be me that's killed. It's going to be you, Goliath. He said, you're the one that's going to die. You're the one that's going to lose your head. And he said, it's not going to be me that's going to have a funeral today. It's going to be you. And even though you think that the birds and the animals are gonna get me, they're gonna get you, Goliath, because God is on my side. And David said to Goliath, 
And this is going to happen, Goliath, because the world needs to know, all the earth needs to know that there is a God in Israel. And David said, not only does all the earth need to know this, my own army needs to know. The fellows that are standing behind me need to know that God is in control and that battles aren't won with a sword and with a shield. That the battles are won through God's power. And that God is going to help me defeat you. Well, Goliath had heard enough. He thought David was mocking him and he'd heard enough. So Goliath started to come at David because he was ready to battle David and kill David. But you know what? David wasn't scared of this. David did what he'd done with the lion and the bear. But even more, when Goliath started to walk towards him, David, we're told, actually ran to meet Goliath. And as he was running to meet him, David grabbed one of those stones out of his pocket out of his bag and he put it into his sling and while Goliath was coming at him David got his stone and slung it in his sling and threw it at Goliath and the Bible tells us that David slung that stone and it hit Goliath right there right in his forehead and before Goliath knew what had happened he fell down dead Goliath was falling down the battle was over just like that. David, with God's help, had killed Goliath. But David didn't stop there. We're told that David ran on and stood on top of Goliath and made sure that he was dead. And guess what, boys and girls? When the Philistine army saw that their champion, their big strong man, had been killed by just a young man, they got really scared and they all turned and they ran away because they were scared of what was going to happen. Israel, on the other hand, David's army, they were excited. They were shouting and they went and chased after that Philistine army and they chased them all the way back to the Philistines, returned to their home country. And Israel had a great victory that day because David had faith that God could, ant could defeat Goliath. And God did help David defeat Goliath. And you know, boys and girls, the Lord helped David win that battle. Sure, David had faith that God would protect him and David went out to face Goliath, but God gave them the victory. And you know, boys and girls, in our lives, you know, big things will come along. I don't think we'll ever have to face a giant like Goliath. But you know, boys and girls, there are things that come into our life that feel like big giants, feel like things that we could never get over. Things like sickness or sadness, or maybe we have something really difficult happening in our lives. But do you know, boys and girls, if we have faith in God, and if we trust in God, God can make those seemingly massive big giants in our life seem just like something small. Because God is more powerful than them. God can help us have victory. God can help us defeat those big giants in our life. So next time, boys and girls, you think something come along and think, oh, I could never get over this. This is too hard for me. This is just never. I'm never going to win. Think of David and Goliath. David, you know what, should never have beaten Goliath. But God, with God's help, we can do it all. And I am so thankful that God has put the story of David and Goliath in the Bible. Because it, it has helped me many times in my life. I hope it will help you to remember that if we trust in God, any battle is winnable for us. Well, thank you for listening, boys and girls. You've done a great job. Now we've got a special Mother's Day craft for you today. Thank you to Mrs. Hannah for the work she's put in to prepare this. So over to Mrs. Hannah to show us how to do it. Hey kids, I'm going to teach you how to make a paper heart for your mum for Mother's Day. All you need is a regular piece of A4 paper, just like this one. You're gonna turn it over and then take one corner and fold it up until it meets the edge, the top edge of the paper and then fold it on a diagonal. 
Now you're going to cut along the line that you've just made with the edge of your paper. When you've finished cutting this, you'll be left with a nice neat square, just like origami paper. Open up your piece of paper. Then your first step is going to be taking one corner and meeting it up with the other corner on a diagonal. Press it down so that you have a nice neat fold, then open your paper back up to see the two folds that you've created. Then take the top corner and fold it to the middle line. Press it with your fingers to make a nice neat fold, then take the other corner and fold it up to meet the top edge of the paper. Then you'll take the bottom edge of the paper and fold it up to meet with that centre crease line. Watch me do it. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. See, it looks like a heart already. If it's a bit uneven, you might need to fix it up and that's okay. Now flip your heart over and you're going to fold in all the pointy edges on the sides and on the top of the heart. And ta-da! Now you have a lovely heart that you can write a message on for your mum for Mother's Day. I hope you've had fun making this little paper craft today. Make sure that you wish your mum a very happy Mother's Day. See you next time. Thanks kids for watching along with Sunday School Online this week. We're so glad that you joined us for another week of Sunday School Online. Don't forget to like and subscribe below and the link is there to follow through for the activity sheets and memory verse sheet for this week's lesson. And if you can, share it with your family and friends because I'm sure they'd love to have Sunday school as well. And we want to say another really big happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there today. We hope that you have a wonderful day. We do indeed. But before we go, what do we have to remember? that Jesus loves you. Bye. Bye.